Hey guys, so I thought I'd do a little update video today to talk about general life and what I'm reading and what my plans are. Now I'm in a really rambly mood, so I could probably manage to do this video in five minutes, but I have a feeling it's gonna take a lot longer than that. So yeah, sorry about that, but you know, bear with me. So um, effectively, the update is that a few days ago, I tweeted out saying that I might not be able to upload videos for a while because our laptop had sadly broke, completely broke, wouldn't switch on. Now, this happened a year ago and it was under warranty, so we sent it to be fixed and it turned out it was the battery and they replaced it for free. Well, now it's not under warranty and no local people will fix it because it's a gaming laptop, they're notoriously hard to fix. And so it's gonna have to like be sent back to the manufacturers and they're gonna charge us loads of money to fix it. It's really annoying. And we were thinking of switching to a desktop anyway. Initially, we decided against the desktop because of the space that they take up, but I just think laptops tend to break a lot more and when they do break it's a lot more difficult to just replace the broken item whatever it may be whereas desktops like they can just remove the broken item like even Johnny can just do that and just replace it with another one it's much easier you can upgrade them a lot easier and in general you get an awful lot more for your money so we decided to switch so we've got a desktop it arrived yesterday it's very exciting and we're going to be selling the laptop on. We've got to still have the laptop fixed because it's got all our private information on it and we need to remove that before we sell it. So we've got to pay for it to be fixed and then sell it, a bit annoying. So that's what's going on with that. But it's very exciting because we now have a little desk down here and it's, you can't see it, but it's right opposite me. And it's sort of made my reading area like a little snug, which I, re I really love my little reading area, but I love it even more now because it feels really snug-like and it means that in the evening, if I want to sit over here and read in my little armchair, then Johnny's over here as well because his computer's here. So, or our computer. I always call it his computer because I barely use it other than editing and emails, but it is ours. So, one thing I wanted to mention about the computer is I've been reading loads and loads recently and when I see Johnny playing video games, sometimes I get really jealous because when I was a kid, I loved video games. I was obsessed with Spyro and Crash Bandicoot, which are pretty much like your standard um, 90s child video games. And I always want to get back into video games, but I really don't enjoy games where you kill things. Like, I just think if all I'm doing is run around with a bow and arrow or a gun, like, I'm just not interested in it at all. And Johnny's always trying to convince me that there's other games out there that aren't just like that. So, last night, I set him a task to find me some. So, he's downloaded me one called Ori and the Blind Forest, I think it's called. And another one, I can't remember what it's called, I'll, I'll write it here, and it's got a little fox character, and it's set in different seasons, so as you go through the levels, the seasons change, it's beautiful. So, do let me know if you've played either of those games, or also let me know if you have any other recommendations for other games like that, because I really want to try and, you know, just have some different hobbies, because I just spent an awful lot of time sitting in one place reading, which I love, but equally it would be nice to just shake things up a little bit and maybe half an hour a day do something different. So there's that. Apologies if it's really dark, it's really grey outside today, which is good, but not so good for lighting for the videos. So I just wanted to mention, as well as all that general life update stuff, is what I'm reading. So I've been reading this for like five weeks. I put it down for two weeks and I picked it back up a couple of days ago. It's a stamp from the beginning, the definitive history of racist ideas in America. And it's around 550 pages and it's massive as you can see. Now I'm about 220 pages in and I put it down because this book is quite academic, it's quite dry and at some points it gets very repetitive and it does feel like you're just being given a list of like this white guy published this racist paper this white guy responded in another racist tone, but it's just lists of papers that were published, speeches that were given, and I feel like, so far at least, I, I guess it is what it was described as, and I went in with the wrong impression. I, I'm certainly learning a lot, but I want to know more about the, the civil rights movement and like the social context of all this stuff and how this was affecting African Americans at the time. Whereas it's much more about the concept of racism and how it developed and how it was so pervasive rather than the effects of racism on people. So I'm hoping that the latter half of the book is gonna be better because this is chronological. I'm now at the Civil War and I'm hoping that 
like everything after the Civil War is gonna start becoming more sort of recognisable to me and therefore perhaps more interesting. I don't know. I'm definitely enjoying it, it's just it's not an easy book to read, like 15 pages and I'm like going cross-eyed. So what I'm doing is I'm reading a chapter a day. The chapters are about 15 pages and if I manage to read a chapter a day then I'll finish it by the end of this month. So, and I'm really excited because what it does is it chooses a historical figure to tell the story through and the last historical figure, let me just check I'm not wrong, now the last historical figure is Angela Davis. So I am really excited to get to her section, so there's that one. And then what I decided to do, I've got an awful lot of time to read at the moment, so what I decided to do is to start a new way of like looking at my TBR. And the reason for that is, is that I own around 340 unread books, about 55 of those are non-fiction, about 55 of those are short story collections, and the rest are all novels. And I realised that for the last year, I'd been reading nearly all novels. Now, I don't usually read much non-fiction, which is something I always want to rectify, but I usually read more short story collections, and for some reason I just hadn't been picking them up. And I looked at my short story shelf, because they're all together, and realised that's looked the same for ages, apart from it's been growing, and I haven't been reading any of them. It's really stupid. So I decided, I usually read more than one book at a time, but usually what happens is I end up focusing on the one I'm enjoying the most and ignore the others. And so what I decided to do is to finish whatever I was reading at the time, which I did, and then to choose three books. One a novel, one a non-fiction book, and one a short story collection. To decide how many days I wanted to take to read them, and then to work out how many pages of each of the three I needed to read a day in order to accomplish that. That sounds a bit like strict, it's not really that strict, it's like pretty chilled out, but that's what I decided to do. And then just keep repeating that, so you know, I'll finish all three on the same day and then look and choose my next three and keep doing that. And if every now and again an extra novel slips in, then I don't mind because I do have, you know, way more novels than I do anything else. But I would just like to try and do this like four times each month, perhaps for the rest of the year. This is how I'm feeling at the moment. I'm not going to be really strict with myself about it, but that's how I'm feeling at the moment because that would mean that I do get through, you know, a large amount of short story collections and non-fiction by the end of the year, which I'd like. So that's how it's working. The three I picked the day before yesterday and I'm sort of currently working on are uh, Autumn by Ali Smith. Riverine, a memoir from anywhere but here by Angela Palm, and Things We Lost in the Fire by Mariana Enriquez. Now, Autumn was actually a super quick read, so I finished it in two days. I finished it last night. So now I only have the non fiction and the short story collection left to read this evening. I've got 100 pages of this and 70 pages of this left. So, what I may do is just slip in a short novel this evening. It depends on how I feel. If I get into these video games, then I might not. But I might just slip in an extra little short novel. And then my plan is to obviously choose my next three. Now, at the moment, I know the short story collection is definitely going to be Sour Heart by Jenny Zhang. I sent this quite recently from Bloomsbury. It came out, I think, early August and I'm really excited about it. I think it's going to take me a bit longer. It's 300 pages, but there's quite a lot of text to a page. Um, short story collections are usually quite short, so this is quite unusual. So there's that. And then I'm choosing between two essay collections, one being Why I'm No Longer Talking to White People About Race by Rennie Edo Lodge, and one being Sunshine State by Sarah Gerard. Now, the reason I'm toying between these two is I'm more excited about this part of me thinks I should wait until I finish Stamp from the beginning because perhaps, I know it's different countries it's focusing on, but perhaps it could put some stuff in like better context for me and I'd pick up on more having understood reading about civil rights in America. So part of me thinks I should wait until next month. And then with this one, part of me wants to read this really soon because I think it's going to be written quite similarly, I always struggle with that word, I think it's going to be written in quite a similar way to Riverine and I'd quite like to review them together but then part of me thinks will it lessen the enjoyment if I've read something in quite a similar tone really recently so I don't know I'd like your opinions on that how do you feel about those things and then novel I'm not really sure 
Um, I don't really know what I feel like reading, so I'm not going to sort of commit to anything, and I'm just going to see how I feel tomorrow when I pick up a new novel. So that's how that's going, and I'm just thinking I'm going to definitely do that throughout the whole of September, and then if I'm still enjoying doing it, then I'll carry it on, you know, a bit longer. But I've been enjoying it because it's nice to always finish the free books at the same time, and to always have a bit of everything on the go, and it's really good. And what I have been doing is every time I choose the next three, I post the photo on Instagram. So if you do want to, you know, be kept up to date on the next three, you can find out there. I do it on Goodreads as well, but I think it's nicer to have it in like a visual way. So you can go and follow me on there and see my next three when I choose them tomorrow. So yeah, thanks for watching this video. Let me know down below anything you'd like, especially about cute, pretty video games for people who are rubbish at video games. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!